I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise. And I'm V-Bug. And welcome to this video overview of Osprey Games. In this video, we're going to discover the publisher's history, how transactions of tea, over time, transformed into the tabletop trade, and we'll be revisiting several games in their catalog. Including their upcoming game, Wildlands, designed by the legendary Martin Wallace. Who also designed London. Hey, what? what was that? I... I don't know. Yes, keep going. Okay, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, in Wildlands, players control a group of fantasy miniatures as they scramble to collect gems and knock out the other players, which they'll do by playing cards from their own deck, customized for each faction. The cards allow units to race across the board, collect gems, and launch attacks at other players. Additionally, some cards can interrupt other players, allowing you to take actions on their turn, such as movement, melee, ranged attacks, and more. And there's more customized factions in the works. That's right! Its first faction expansion has already been announced, the Unquiet Dead, which includes six new mini miniatures. Wait, what's this little seventh guy with this dapper brown vest doing in here? Uh, sorry, this miniature doesn't come with the expansion, it's just these six uh, undead guys. The undead... What in the world is going on? You don't know? Okay. It's because all of this is coming up, hopefully, as we jump into Osprey Games and Wildlands. No, not this time, Lord. No! Just... Lord, I'll... Dad? Dad? <gasps> Ice cream for dinner. Whoa, what in the This can't be good. My horoscope specifically said to avoid mysterious portals today. Hey, who, who are you? John Erickson, uh, Osprey Games Quality Assurance Department. Oh, hi, uh, Chaz Marler, uh, Pair of Dice Paradise. Yeah, great, nice to meet you. I, I need to take this back with me. What, is there a problem with my pre-release copy of Wildlands? Well, it turns out there is. There's been a component mix-up and some of the gems have been replaced with little bite-sized candies. <gasps> oh, you know how that happens. That was terrible, yeah, uh, I understand. Uh, but you know what? One thing I don't understand is this whole sucked through a mysterious portal into the game itself thing. Well, yes. But I, I can explain. The intertabletop trans portal device. It's standard issue for analog game custodians like myself. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Is it a toy? Can I touch it? What's it no, do? No, no, no. It allows us to enter the games and make changes. I mean, oh. how did you think board games were made? Oh, well, I, I just thought that they were assembled in some sort of faraway land. In hindsight now, I see that that makes no sense. I'm such an idiot. You know, though, one of these little intergalactic planetary doodads would come in super handy with recording board game videos. You think that you could uh, convince Osprey to hook me up with one of them? No. There's mm. no way any publisher would ever let something like this get into the hands of the public. It'd be far too dangerous. Mm. In fact, you shouldn't even be here right now. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and take you home. Okay, I'll hold that thought. Hello, Chaz Marler, Pair of Dice Paradise. Hey, Chaz, this is Sylvester Duncan from Osprey Games. Uh, we are having a little bit of trouble with our pre-release of Wildlands, so we're sending out our uh, analog game custodian, uh, John Erickson, to uh, take a look at it. Don't be surprised if Yeah, you... yeah, I, I know. I, I'm with him right now, uh, inside of Wildlands. Oh, uh, great. Then uh, why don't you just do a ride-along with him today, and that way you can learn uh, more about Osprey's history and its product line. Oh, well now you've gone and made it sound like work and ruined it for me, but all right, I suppose. Great! Just don't do anything that might cause a paradox in the space-time continuum while you're inside the games. That could cause a terrible ripple effect throughout history. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? Oh, Chaz, I gotta go. The uh, Unquiet Dead are about to unionize. Bye. Huh. Well, Mr. Erickson, it appears that I will be joining you on your job today. So, uh, what's our next stop? I don't think that's a good idea at all. I mean, well, now that I think about it, you might be of some help after all. Here, hold this. Oh, is London where we're going next? That's right. And I hope you brought a hat because we are about to open a portal to London. Ooh, cool. Is it going to hurt? Well, it's not going to hurt me. 
Oh my goodness, now we're in the second edition of London. And these are all the cards that you play as you rebuild London after the Great Fire. Oh, look at all these fantastic locations to visit. Yep, and speaking of locations, I need to go take care of something across the river from Southwark. Why don't you have yourself a little lunch? Ooh. I hear there's a new tea shop that opened up pretty near here in Manchester. Okay, sure. Wait a minute, isn't that like 200 miles away? Yeah. <gasps> of course! You mean the Brook Bond tea shop where Osprey's story all begins. Because Osprey Games began as a subsidiary of Osprey Publishing, which was originally owned by Berkshire Printing, which started out as a part of Brook Bond, the tea company founded by Arthur Brook, who opened his first tea shop in 1869 at 23 Market Street, Manchester. You really like the sound of your own voice, don't you? Oh, I absolutely love it. In 1954, Brook Bond Tea Company will start including collectible picture cards in with their tea packages, featuring artwork by the leading aviation illustrator of the time, Dick Ward. Eventually, these collectible cards will serve as the impetus for Berkshire Printing to establish an imprint called Osprey Publishing, which will produce its first book in 1969. The book, titled Air Cam Aviation Series 1 North American P-51D Mustang in USAAF-USAF Service, will be the brainchild of Mr. Ward and will feature detailed and authoritative text and color and black and white artwork about the aircraft and its place in military history. And this spawns an entire series of books on various military regiments, uniforms, and machinery. And by the time Osprey Publishing becomes an independent company in 1998, they will have produced over 400 titles in the series. Over time, their publications will expand into rules for warfare gaming, and their first tabletop game, Fields of Glory, will be published in 2008. And then, 10 years later, Osprey Games continues to publish a variety of war, tabletop, and board games with over two dozen titles in their catalog. So yeah, I would love to check out that tea shop in Manchester. How, how much time did you say we've left? Oh, I've already been and come back, so I'm done. We need to get moving though. So here, hold this. Huh? Oh. And I hope you're up on your malaria shots because we are off to the Brazilian rainforest. Not, you ready? No, I, wait, I'm allergic to malaria. Ooh, the lost expedition. Are we about to follow in the famous footsteps of Percy Fawcett as he explored this foreboding jungle on his way to find El Dorado, the lost city of gold? Well, that doesn't really exist, but mm. that's all right. There's still lots and lots of good things to find in the jungle, like um, over there. Oh, Here, put this on. Okay. I'll be right back. You don't care. I'm, I'm happy to help. And you know, it's probably a good idea because we're going to have to prepare for all of the you know, perilous pitfalls that may await us in this turbulent jungle. Because we don't want to have the same thing you know, happen to us that happened to Mr. Fawcett. We're going to have to make sure that we have plenty of ammunition and uh, medical supplies and food, you know, <laughs> just like in the game. You know, because what we absolutely positively have to do is stay focused. Hello, Chaz Marler, Paradise Paradise. How may I be of assistance? Chaz, um, while you were in London, did you do anything that may have disrupted the flow of history? No, in fact, all I did was I just stood on a street corner giving a detailed explanation of how a little English tea shop would eventually turn into a successful book and game publisher. In the future, with uh, specific dates mentioned, out, out loud for anyone with an earshot to hear. Why do you ask? Is something amiss? Well, history books now say that in 1869, Queen Victoria and the Crown Jewels went missing. Do you think my revelations about the future had something to do with all of that? You want me to go back and fix it? Because, you know, I could. I, I, could, I could go back and I could just tell everybody that it was a plot from a digital movie that I downloaded off the internet. No, Biff. Don't say, do, touch anything, especially something that might cause the loss of more precious jewels. Of course, no, I'll make sure that I don't touch anything of historical significance. Yeah, no, okay, uh, bye. Uh, you ready to uh, start our uh, trek into the lost expedition? Uh, we're done here. What? Hold this. Uh -huh. Next up, high society. High Society is this card game all about just accumulating wealth and fortune and things. Oh, not again. Chaz Marler, Paradise, but, uh huh? Uh huh? No, I, I, I don't know what I could have done that would have actually allowed Percy Fawcett to find a map to the Lost City of Gold, but 
Wouldn't him not getting lost in the jungle be a good thing? Oh, he found the lost city of gold and it caused a Brazilian gold rush. Completely decimated the Amazon rainforest, you say. The entire global ecosystem in disarray and turmoil now, you say. Okay, gotcha. What did you do while in high society? So many valuables from the 1920s elite went missing. You've caused the Great Depression to be triggered earlier and to be so severe that the global economy has never recovered. And I've had to survive on cat food since I was 12. French aristocracy robbed blind? Blamed the underclass fueling rebellion and lack of cake made everyone even grumpier, intensifying the French Revolution so much that it rages on still today? Global economy in ruins? Uh, look, you know, you know what? I'll just have Mr. Erickson bring me directly home, okay? That way I can't cause any more drama today. Hey! What is this? Uh, souvenir. Uh, that's a brain in a jar. Why do you have a brain in a jar? Why? What's with the brain in the jar? Is that an alien brain in a jar? You don't understand. This is going to fetch a fortune on the collector's market. It's going to be worth more than a full mint condition set of holographic promo cards. What's going on there? Why is everyone talking about brains in a jar? No one authorized smuggling of extraterrestrial brains across historical lines today. Uh, you know what? H hang on. Hang on. Just, just a minute here. Well, artifacts, precious gems, uh, the, the British crown jewels. Hey. How would you describe Mr. John Erickson? Shorter guy, dapper brown vest, lack of big red beard. And by any chance, would you recognize a very tall man, uh, various hats, presence of big red beard? The only man I know that fits that description is the notorious interdimensional artifact thief, Jake Bay. He uses board games as wormholes in time and space to steal priceless artifacts from the past, present, and future. It was you! It was you this whole time! You caused all the turmoil in the timeline! Just so you could line your pockets with treasures from the past, present, and future? Let me call you back. What's going on with the brain? Give me all that fat loot and tell me what happened to John Erickson. Oh, you'll find out what happened to John Erickson because you're about to join him. Huh? You see, the inter-tabletop transportal device can not only transport people into board games, it can also transport people into board games! <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. It sounds like you just said the same thing twice. No, you have to listen to the context of each sentence, you see. Okay, okay here, pay attention. Um, it can not only uh -huh. transport people uh -huh. into board games, okay. but it can also uh -huh. transport people into board games! You see? <laughs> nope. No, still the same uh, thing. I'm, uh, I'm missing something. All right, I'm sorry. Listen, listen I'll, I'll lay it out very carefully. Okay. You know how I can press the button and it will transport us into the board game, the world where our real world rules and the board game rules kind of mesh together? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We actually transfer us into the game. That's what we've been doing all day. That, exactly. That part I exactly. Get. See, that's there's fun. another setting, oh. and when I use it and I press the button, and that's the setting it's on now. Uh -huh. It will transport you uh -huh. into uh -huh. the board game. Do you understand? No. The second one is where I press the button, it turns you into a game component, and you're stuck in the game forever. Does that help? <gasps> now I get it. Finally. Now I fully understand that what you should have said was actually transform you into a board game, not actually transport. Because yeah, yeah, semantics, whatever. Yeah. But the point stands that I'm going to press the button, and you are going to become a component in a board game. Okay, okay, but you know what? Be before we get to that, before we get to that, while we're still in this weird dimension where reality and board game rules mix, yes. I'm going to cast an interrupt to uh, stop you mid-action and then cast a ranged attack. Blast! Outdone once again by a subtle demonstration of the card play mechanisms in the upcoming game Wildlands, designed by Barton Wallace and published by Osprey Games. You fool! You've overloaded the intra-tabletop transportal device's circuitry! It's gonna blow! Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! no! Oh no! Well, that was alright. Oh no. Dad! Dad! What was that crash? What? Well, what is all this? <gasps> Ooh, generic bite-sized candies. Dad? Dad, is that you? Don't worry, Dad. I'll save you. 
On one condition. And so, with the help of Osprey Games, we were able to return both myself and Mr. Erickson to our normal selves and restore the timeline to its original proper condition by returning all the stolen items to their rightful places in history. Well, nearly all of them. But that's all the time we have for now. So I hope that you learned something about Osprey Games and until next time, take care and of course, God save the Queen.